It's a beautiful May day in the city of Jacksonville. The Gator Bowl located right along the shores of the St. John's River. The temperature 81. Humidity is most comfortable. The wind's moderate. And it's just as good a day as you could ever want to have for a football game. The crowd expected to be in excess of 60,000. Last year, the uh, New Jersey Generals came here and drew a record crowd of 73,000. And right now with the crowd today, the Jacksonville Bulls lead the USFL in attendance, averaging more than 46,000 people. And, of course, with the New Jersey Generals, who, uh, with a win today, can share the lead in the Eastern Conference, but they bring four members of the University of Georgia championship team, or at least the three of them are members of the New Jersey Ball Club, and two uh, uh, with the Jacksonville Bulls, including Herschel Walker, who had so many great games here. So I imagine folks have come from the many parts of the state of Georgia to see the Gays game as well. Looking at the Eastern Conference standings now, the Tampa Bay Bandits 8-3 off their 24-14 win in Los Angeles last night. Birmingham losing at Memphis Friday night, 38-24 now with four losses. New Jersey with a win today will keep a share of first place. Jacksonville with a win would be tied with Memphis for fourth place, and it's a pretty good race in the Eastern Conference as we go into the second half of the regular season. Our analyst is Lynn Swan, and Swanny, I know you feel that one of the prime factors in this ball game will be the matchup between the Jacksonville receivers and the New Jersey cornerbacks. It should be a real good one. The New Jersey cornerbacks in question will be number 37, Jerry Holmes, and number 26, Kerry Justin. They'll be covering primarily the Jackson, Jacksonville Bulls wide receiver, uh, the guy with two first names, Alexis Alton, and uh, number 85, Perry Kemp. Now, if they can cover them man-to-man -man throughout the afternoon, they will successfully take away the major portion of the Jacksonville offense and will make it difficult for them to win this ball game. They're physical people, so what you're saying is they're probably going to lay a hard lick on uh, Alexis and uh, and anybody who comes off that corner, including Mark Keel, the tight end. That's correct. They're going to play mostly man-to-man -man coverage to try and take away the open zones that this offense is really geared to and force them to try and go deep or force them back into a running game. Well, what about the Herschel Walker factor? Now, Herschel's played four games here in the Gator Bowl, and he has never had a bad one. Herschel Walker is on a roll. After his shoulder operation this offseason, He's come back very strong, and I don't think they're going to stop him completely. Of course, Maurice Carthen is having a great year also, with Herschel carrying the bulk of the offensive weight, running the football. Her uh, Maurice Carthen continues to be a devastating blocker. What the defense of Jacksonville will have to do is try and stop him before he gets downfield, because the Jacksonville secondary is now the real physical secondary. And once he breaks loose into the secondary, it's all over. Simple point being, big fast people usually whip little fast people. Yeah, all the time. For more now, from the Jacksonville point of view, let's go to the head man, Coach Lindy Infante now with our Tim Brandt. When these two clubs met last year, it came down to the last couple of seconds. Brian Franco attempting a field goal. The referee fell down. It was determined that the kick missed and Jacksonville lost. Well, here we are again. Now, they've talked upstairs about the Flutie Walker factor. They've talked about your offense and their secondary on the other side. How big is the special team play today, Lindy? Well, I think we've got to make something big happen in special teams because uh, this is a fine football team we're playing against. And if all three faces of our football team aren't functioning well, we're going to be hard-pressed to win this football game. We've got to make something big happen in special teams. Now, you've won three in a row, and this is a big ball game for you, but I've got to ask you, even at the break, you've been point here now in the season, five and five, how big is it to you? Well, it's a big ball game. We've got to keep our momentum going. We've got some of the toughest teams in the league to play from here on. If we can win this football game today, it'll just give us great, great momentum going into the second half of the season, and we're just going to have to have that to be competitive. Okay, Lindy, good luck today. Thank you. Keith, there's no bigger thrill in football than coming through the thing with a big crowd coming out of that locker room and out of the tunnel with a big vociferous enthusiastic crowd it is here today and there's a tremendous surge of energy down here on the sidelines and i wouldn't be surprised but what the crowd will go in the neighborhood of 70,000 if they keep coming in it is bigger obviously than the crowd of last week when the jacksonville bulls got some breaks in, in the form of uh, four turnovers and beat uh, birmingham doug flutie will uh, have the first possession going for him on a real grass field here, and it's a fine turf. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not they can make him throw the ball this afternoon. And uh, I would think that would be what Jacksonville would like him to do, is make him throw the ball. All right, New Jersey will kick off as Ruzak floats one down through the 15-mile-an-hour win. Jacksonville's Aubrey Matthews having a little trouble getting a handle on it. And as a result, the Jacksonville Bulls are going to start with terrible field position down inside their 10-yard line. Donnell Daniel hurrying down the field 
uh, to make the tackle. Ed Luther, who has improved every time he has come on the field in a Jacksonville Bull uniform, comes trotting out now. He had an outstanding performance last week against Birmingham. Barry Mason and Mike Rozier will be the setbacks for him, and both are pretty good pass receivers. Alton Alexis, Perry Kemp, and Mark Keel will be the primary receivers with Gruber, Anderson, Tennyson, Turner, and Richard, the big people up front, and they have become very efficient. So they're going to start from near their own eight-yard line first down. Let's see if they dare throw the ball early, give it off to Rozier. And Rozier, 5'10", 190 pounds, Heisman Trophy winner out of Nebraska, played his first season with the Pittsburgh Maulers, wiggles his way up to about the 10 for a pickup of two yards. They won't get a lot of yardage running in the middle of that New Jersey defensive crowd because that's a pretty tough bunch. They've got Lockett, Weaver, and uh, Byrne, uh, the down people, with Weddington, Clemens, Borland, and Leopold. They are without John Joyce. Kerry Justin, Gregory Johnson, John Preston, and Jerry Holmes, the defensive secondary. It is second down and eight now, and they've got uh, three wide receivers out there. They give it on a little delay to Rozier, and Mike fights his way up to around the 14, close to the 15. So they'll be looking at third down and three, and that time he got a little wiggling room over the right side. Walt Michaels, of course, the head coach of the New Jersey Generals, and uh, Lindy Infante, the head man of the Jacksonville Bulls. First series of downs, Keith, the defensive line looked like they were just set up for the run all the way, anticipating Rozier carrying the ball. Jerry Holmes came up playing close coverage on Alexis Alton. They need four yards to keep it. Luther will throw. Pass is away, and the pass is incomplete. He had two men over there, and it went past the first man, Rozier, and then through the hands of Reggie Butts. So, the Jacksonville Bulls, Larry Swider, comes out as they fail to pick up a first down, and Swider, averaging just under 42 yards per kick, should hit this one up around his five. Danny Knight is the deep man for the New Jersey Generals, and New Jersey should come out of this with very good field position for their opening possession. a long count hoping that New Jersey might get a little eager and try to jump but they don't do it and Swider gets it out and it's not a very good kick spins around and takes a New Jersey bounce and a penalty flag goes down back around the line of scrimmage so let's see about that but right now the possession of the ball is going to go to New Jersey right around the 38 39 yard line it was only 24 yards on the punt Illegal formation, offense number 79. So the calls against Jacksonville, I'm sure New Jersey will take the ball. Ted Humphrey is the referee, Dave Fuller the umpire, Bob Walker the head linesman, Rich Sands the line judge, Don Gassaway the back judge, John Everett the side judge, and Mike Looney the field judge. And we'll see the generals with the ball in a moment. Doug Flutie at quarterback, Herschel Walker, Maurice Carthon, the setbacks, Walter Broughton, Clarence Collins, the wide people, Sam Bowers, the tight end. Big guys in the line are Mackey, Stroke, Hull, Harris, Mags for New Jersey. And the Generals' first snap will come from the Jacksonville 39. That's a tough place to start playing your first defense from. Ludy will throw on first down on a straight drop. Gets it away under some pressure, and it is out of bounds incomplete. And number 99 came blistering in there. It was Joe Costello, the outside linebacker. Joe took a pause, and he saw Flutie was determined to throw the ball. He just drilled it. He certainly did. Coming out uncharacteristically for the New Jersey Generals, throwing the ball on first down in light of the great success. Take a look at the defensive lineup, Anderson playing there with Nelson and Millard in line. They're the linebackers in the secondary. Jakes, Gee, Johnson, and Dykes. On the second down and 10, give the ball to Walker, trying to go outside, and Herschel does. He is cut down by number 48, Joe Johnson, a rookie out of Notre Dame, as Joe went for his feet and got it. But the acceleration of Walker with his size is awesome, slanting off that corner. Now we're talking about, her here's Herschel Walker again. We talked about his great ability 
being on the roll. This is second down. Most people might want to throw, having not had success on the first down. They hand it off to Herschel. He gets good blocking and dropping the shoulder. He picks up a good seven yards on the carry. Third down. Jacksonville caught in coaching. No, I guess not. I don't see a flag. They send it up the middle and they didn't make it. So Herschel Walker is blunted in the first down try and that has to jack up the Jacksonville defense. Let's see what they're looking at on fourth down. It's still fourth down in about three yards. So you're pretty sure now that uh, they'll probably go for the three as Ruzak now comes onto the field. So they will. So Jacksonville, having given the ball over to New Jersey on their own 39, if they get out of here with three or less, the defensive guys are going to go to the sidelines happy. This will be a 49-yard try, so it's not a gimme. The wind may help him a little bit. Crowds into the game already. It's good. So it's Ruzak's longest kick of the season, 49 yards, and it comes with 11.02 to go in the first quarter. The USFL's attendance leader is Jacksonville, and you can see why on a lovely Sunday afternoon. Ruzak will kick off, and the Jacksonville beat people need to get the jitters out of their system now and do something. That's way back in the end zone, and Butts is coming with it, and I don't know if that's a good decision. After the 16, that's all. Well, that's four yards short of a good, de of a good decision, Keith. If you don't think you can get back to the 20-yard line on the kickoff return, you might as well just hold it down and into the end zone. So once again, Ed Luther comes out now, and the offense is going to be trapped a little bit here by what they would like to do because of the field position. Last week it was Birmingham that lost field position due to turnovers and Jacksonville that took advantage of it. And so far in their first possession, it's Jacksonville that's given up field position. They put Mason in motion now, giving them three wides and they go to the air on first down. Luther goes down the sidelines with it and throws it into the New Jersey bench incomplete. It'll be second down 10. Mason was the man closest to the ball. Freddie Gilbert's not going to play today, we're told, because of an Achilles problem. And Tom Woodland and John Joyce are not here. Getting over injuries, though both of those people are expected to be available next week for New Jersey's game at home against Baltimore. And Baltimore's trailing Arizona in the first quarter, 7-0. comes out and lines up head to head with Dalton Alexis wide man to the bottom of the picture there to see how hard he trucks it when he got away from him Luther dumps it off and there's nothing doing as blitzing people out of the defensive secondary Terry Daniels in particular coming through to hit Perry Kemp on that little swing now you see exactly what's happening here with man-to-man -man coverage. You send someone in motion just to find out how they're going to play it, see who's covering who. They find out that Kemp's got the man-to-man -man coverage to set up the quick screen. But Terry Daniels reacts very quickly coming up from about 10 yards down Bill Keith to make a great tackle to stop them on converting in that second down situation. The ball comes back to the 8-yard line, so it is third down and 18 as Brian Seif along the sidelines. I don't think see him today. But he has been activated. And back goes Luther to throw from the goal line. And he's hit and he is knocked down at the three. Roaring in is Big Jim Byrne. 6'4", 280. Lockett was coming from one side, Byrne from the other, and Byrne got him. And right now the New Jersey defense is slapping the Jacksonville offense around pretty well. Paul well, Michael said before the game, if my corners can cover to knock off the timing of the passing attack, then it gives my defensive lineman a chance to put on a pass rush. That time, man-to-man -man coverage by Holmes and company allowed Byrne to have enough time to find Ed Luther dropping for the loss. Wider out of the end zone. No pressure on him, and it's a little better kick. Coming up to the 46 to Danny Knight. But again, New Jersey has very good field position as Knight is knocked down around the 38-yard line. So they're a yard closer on this possession than they were on the previous one after a 43-yard punt from Larry Slater. 
That's what Herschel Walker has done on this field. You can see when he was at the University of Georgia, he had memorable, day, memorable days against the Florida Gators here. And not a bad game against Jacksonville last year, the 28-26 ball game. Right now, New Jersey will go to work, and they have, in fact, put it on 39, which was the starting point of the previous procession. Give it a Walker, and Herschel bowls his way for a first down inside the Jacksonville 29. Well, back to what Lynn Swan said a little while ago. You look in the secondary, and the weights of those people are 185, 180. The biggest man back there, actually, is Joe Johnson at 6'1", 195. And they're just simply not going to handle Herschel Walker one-on-one. -on -one. There's just no way. There's no way they can do it, plus the fact Don Max had one of the great blocks of all time, driving his man some eight yards downfield, Keith. Rudy back. Goes for Sam Bowers. He's got it. Touchdown. 29-yard touchdown pass to the tight end, Sam Bowers. By the way, the New Jersey Generals, Keith, have diversified their offensive attack, choosing the, to pass on the first down in their first possession, and now coming back and quickly in their second possession with excellent field position, hitting Sam Bowers, who splits his own coverage of number 26, Chester Gee, and 23, Donald Dykes, for the big touchdown running a very simple little corner route. Ruzak is in for the extra point try. Jacksonville's return team has put him in a hole both times. Not been able to generate any offense so far in the ball game. Roger kicks it, penalty flag. Hold on. Not just the return team, Keith, but also the punter. Yeah, the punter hasn't helped either. Holding through the flag. Offense number 59. So they'll make them kick it again. Maurice Clemens, who is part of the kicking team, was caught holding. We'll take another look at the touchdown. Play action pass. You see everybody up close to that line of scrimmage looking for the run. It holds everyone, and Sam Bauer is right there in the seam of the zone. Now he just carries Chester Gee. Just not big enough and strong enough to bring him down on the contact. We'll take a look at Doug Flutie. A straight drop back pass. He knows he's throwing a good one. Very pleased. Or maybe he was just jumping up so he could see it, Keith. <laughs> That's probably right. This kick will come from the 20. Now it's not so automatic. Partridge gets it down, and Ruzak drills it through. Well, Ruzak looks like he's got great velocity on that kicking leg today. Eight minutes and nine seconds to play in the first quarter. Jacksonville so far has done nothing while New Jersey has scored ten. Hey, it was his touchdown catch White that gave play. the Generals their ten-nothing hey. lead. Now it is Reggie Butts and Aubrey Matthews, the deep people for Jacksonville. And the receiving people now have got to make the right decisions and try to give Jacksonville some decent uh, field position so the offense will have some room to work. They bobbled the ball on the first one. The second time, uh, Butch took it five yards deep in the end zone and ran it out. So they've yet to get the ball past the 20-yard line. And Butch ran out of Roger Ruzek kickoff that was very high, had excellent hang time. So the New Jersey coverage team was able to penetrate and get downfield to put up a solid wall. This is a low sailing kick that is fielded by Matthews. Matthews pops through the first wave and gets the ball out near the 28. And so right now, Jacksonville's looking at their best field position of the ball game. Two plays, 39 yards. It only took them one minute. But the one thing about it, as you said during the commercial break, that run by Walker, if that's an indication of what he's going to be able to do today, Oh boy. It'll be a long afternoon for the Jacksonville Bulls defense. Gary Clark, who had been leading the team in punt returns and kickoff returns, was released this week. Oh, we've got some new people doing it. This is Mike Rozier to the 31. That's a pickup of three yards as he tried to slant off the right side, but there were three big guys waiting for him when he got there. Number 96, James Lockett, and number 50, Kyle Borland. All in that play, and also number 52, Mike Reddington. 
New Jersey, Keith, I think has become one of the more physical teams in the USFL. Early on in the season and all of last year, they played very conservative, allowed you to move down the field and figure, well, you, when you made a mistake, then we jump on you. Now they're blitzing more, playing more tight coverage, and number 25, John Preston, is a tough hitter back in the secondary. Marvin Lewis is in the backfield as Luther goes back on second down and seven, throws to Mark Field to tie it in at the 40 and gets the first down out of it. I gotta believe that the tight end is gonna be a valuable man for Jacksonville this afternoon. Because New Jersey, I think, in, in most instances where you have those good wide people, it does tend to make your tight end more available. And Keel is a very quick one. He's a very quick one. He's going against a strong safety that will play the least amount of man-to-man -man type coverage in the ball game when you compare it to the cornerbacks. So they'll be looking at him quite a bit, especially in the zone coverage as they were in on that last play. Luther still got it. And he has Keel again. So Mark Keel grabs his second pass in a row and a second successive cut first down as Gregory Johnson comes across to make the hit on him. Keith, that was an outstanding play by number 11, Ed Luther. What made it to a standing, watch the play action fake. And watch how many people are fooled right here by this little fake right there. The defense all running to the left while Luther still got the ball. Almost a naked bootleg, and he finds, finds his tight end kill for a great diving catch. Ball is now on the New Jersey side of the field at the Generals 46, where it's first down. Luther staying in the air. And again, he goes to, to the tight end, this time Robert Young, out of Bethune Cookman. And they went into that alignment with a pair of tight ends, Keel and Young, with Mason coming out. And it was Robert Young available. The game is down to about the 40. And they'll need three more yards on the second snap. Keith, when I talked to Ed Luther yesterday, he said that he thought they would try and play a lot of man-to-man -man on the wide receivers. And if they did, what he'd have to do is try and go downfield a little bit to at least threaten them deep. But what he did on that last play is he sent his receivers downfield. They cleared out the zone for the tight end. Second and three, Luther four in a row. See what happens when you get a little field position. It makes a lot of difference. This is Rozier. And Mike is going to be a yard and a half, maybe two yards short of the first down. As Kyle Bolin and John Preston would not let him get around the corner. Strategically, that's a good time to hand the ball off to him, Keith, to give him a chance to run with it. You're in good field position. You, you made good ground on the first down. Uh, you don't have that far to go. If he doesn't pick up your first down, you're still going to be third and short, which, which presents a very easy situation. But in that second down play, had Rozier been able to break a big one, gives the defense a little more to worry about from the Jacksonville offense. Norris Brown is now in the ball game. He's another member of that uh, Georgia championship team. It's Mason in motion. Luther gives to Rozier. Rozier will not get the first down. Now Lindy Infante has got to make a decision. It is fourth down and about a yard, maybe a little less. Lockett, Weaver, Byrne, Borland all in, making great penetration on the play. And I think he's going to keep the ball with the offense, Keith. Being down by 10 points so early in the ball game, I think he wants to give his offense some confidence, give them a lift, and try and swing the emotions back to their side. Mike Rozier, the second rusher in the USFL, behind Walker. It's fourth down, a yard and a half. Rozier dives over the top and gets the first down as he's just short of the 35. Just want to remind everyone, Rozier playing with some very badly injured hands. Ligaments were damaged in his left hand earlier in the season. He had some heavily taped last week. He had an injury to his pinky finger with a bone uh, partially dislocated. Tore some of the skin off of it. But he's still out there playing. It's first down just short of the New Jersey 35 for Jacksonville. They're trying to respond now with some offense as they go to Rozier again. He eludes that first man. Diving in was Clemens, number 59. Slowed him a little bit. And Rozier gets the ball inside the 34. Oh, 
was a tough year for Rozier Keith back in Pittsburgh when he played for the Marlins that first year. He said that he was out there trying hard, but sometimes he felt that the whole organization just got down in the middle of the year. And no one was really out trying to win that much. Second down and eight for Jacksonville. Rozier on a sweep. Two men in front of him. First down. Gary Anderson and Bob Gruber pulled out. He had both of them in front of him, and they cleared the road for him, and he takes it inside the 25 and close to the 23. Here is a significant injury report from the New Jersey side. Donnell Daniel has a separated shoulder. Ooh. Now he's their nickelback. That's bad for them, especially when they put all those wide receivers in there. Again, you look at the replay, that's number 75. That's a good play by Preston, wasn't it? He oh. went right in there with those two, two big elephants, took them on, and forced him out of bounds. He took one on and kept his position, forcing the other to try and go after him. And Rozier that cut the sidelines, only picking up the first down. Staying with Rozier, works his way up the middle. That's a tough run! Touchdown! one for you, Mr. Walker, from the other side of the field. Rozier on nine carries, 48 yards. Jacksonville has scored. Mike Rozier, he has seen the enemy, felt their strength, and answered with some power of his own. Franco's kick is good. I Watch this run. This is a end. I think, Keith, this is the kind of run that really also describes Rozier's attitude and character. A man who is going to be hit, pushed back at times, but who will not give up, take your best shot, and then continue moving forward. You see the early moves here, real quick moves, different from Herschel Walker, much more of an instinctive fluid runner. Herschel kind of finds his holes and explodes through them. So a great run of 23 yards by Rozier at 1.51 to go first quarter, and it's a 10-7 ball game, General. kickoff. It is taken by Rod Pagee. And a good return by the Oklahoman as he comes back to about the 35. And wind is blowing from left to right. And Franco got it up in the air and the wind killed it. Cost him some yardage on it. But Pagee's split the middle and looked for a minute like he might find a lot of open pasture. Well, if Special teams is going to be a factor in this ball game right now. It's New Jersey that's really racking up some yardage in that area. Arthur, you get to see the ball today. Herschel Walker. At about four yards, up to near the 40-yard line. Joe Costello, number 99, from Central Connecticut State, brought him down. Tim Brandt now with Big Michael. Mike, tell us about the touchdown first. Well, it was a draw. It was closed up on the right, so I just cut it back to the left. I broke one tackle, and after that, it was easy. Any extra incentive today because Hershey was on the other side? No, nah, I'm glad to play with Hershey and Doug out there. You know, they both got highs. It's like a return. Um, um, a little family get together now, you know, but I'm not doing the best I can. I can't worry about those guys. All right, like Pete Walker again. First down as he bowls over. I mean, runs over Chester G. He's doing a great job. Mike talking about all the Heisman Trophy winners. I talked to him yesterday, Keith. He said if Archie Griffith was here, who won two Heisman Trophies, they probably would have had a parade through the streets of downtown Jacksonville. Look at this hit. <laughs> nice hit by Herschel. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. 
Lester Gee coming up. The man that took over the free safety position after Don Bessel, who was traded to Memphis, had an outstanding game last week. The last week, more of a finesse football game where he wasn't being physically challenged by anyone. First quarter is over. So after 15 minutes before a big crowd on a beautiful day at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, the generals have it, and they're marching it behind the legs of Herschel Walker, but right now it's a contest. 10-7 ball game. Robbie Mafu's 15, and the way the roster's set up today, and the number two quarterback in Ryan Sight, just activated this week, is the number three quarterback. Right now, they're watching Doug Flutius march the New Jersey Generals downfield from the 47th first down for the Generals. Carthen this time, the up man, and Maurice Carthen is going to have close to five yards, give him four on the carry before Terry Beeson, an inside linebacker, brings him down. You see the court, you see the stats there in the uh, first quarter, fairly even, except for the time of possession. Jacksonville possessing the ball on their last drive, six minutes and 27 seconds when they scored the touchdown. They've had to hold on to the football just to the length of the field because they've had such poor field position all day. Yeah, uh, New Jersey had the ball both times at the 39 of Jacksonville. Second and six. Back goes Flutie. Got him. Back at the 46-yard line. Beeson and Nelson. Bob Nelson, the nose tackle, he's going to have a tough job all day going against the center, Ken Hall, who was one of the better linemen for the New Jersey Generals. He played it very well. He was being blocked. Doug Flutie had looked downfield. He was holding position. Duck took off and decided to run, and while still being blocked, Nelson was able to reach out to the side, grab him by the ankles, and pull him down. That's the 14th sack of the season on Flutie. Now it's third down and nine. Out of the shotgun. Flutie's pass down the middle for Bowers is incomplete. So it'll be fourth and nine, but there is a penalty flag waiting back at the line of scrimmage. Number 48, Joe Johnson was the defensive back who was down there more or less waiting and took that shot on Sam Bowers. Illegal formation, offense number 76. The Don Mags in the wrong place apparently. Lined up either so far off the ball they didn't have seven men or else ahead of the ball. So to bring up fourth down and nine as Jacksonville declines it. Baltimore has gone ahead of Arizona in the first quarter, 14 to seven. Rick Partridge averaging 39. Reggie Butts and Perry Kemp, two deep men for Jacksonville. Okay, I anticipate he'll angle it towards the sideline, trying to get one of those coffin corner kicks. That's in the end zone. I anticipated wrong that time. Well, it looked like he was angled that way, but he didn't get the ball to go that way. So the Bulls take over at the 20. Baltimore Stars will be playing at New Jersey next Sunday, leading Arizona in the second quarter, a first quarter rather. In the second quarter, Orlando and Oakland are scoreless. And in the second quarter, Denver out over San Antonio, 7-3. San Antonio picking up Frank Lockett from the Portland Breakers last week, a fine wide receiver. And uh, Memphis beat Birmingham 38-24 Friday night. That was a good football game. I watched all of it. Memphis played very, very well, particularly their defensive team. From the 20, first down Bulls, 10-7, New Jersey lead. Luther has very good protection. Goes to his tight end, Mark Keel, for a short pickup of two yards on the sidelines in front of Jerry Holmes. But the New Jersey secondary playing man against those wide receivers have shut him down so far. Well, that time Jerry Holmes came up in the bump and run, Keith, like he was playing a man. And then the receiver went downfield, and he saw the tight end coming across, and he let the wide receiver go because he was running into someone else's uh, zone of coverage. So he was right there on the tight end when he caught the pass, so he didn't turn it upfield for the big game. Second down and eight from the 22. Matthews in motion and throwing on second down, swinging out to Rozier. That's an incomplete forward pass. Thrown too low in front of Mike. Real tough pass to throw. Ed Luther has to 
take something off of it. He has a real sharp angle on which he has to throw the Ruzier. He's coming out of that backfield position. He's running away from the ball and downfield at the same time. He has to get the ball there before a linebacker comes up and makes a big stick on Rozier. That breaks a string of five straight completions. 13-27 to go uh, first half. Major pass pulled down. All the way down. What was that? Somebody's got to pull the pants down. <laughs> Third and eight. Injury. To the sidelines to Matthews, and Matthews fights for the first down. Very good job by Matthews. Making the catch, been struggling, pushing his way downfield through Gregory Johnson and Jerry Holmes. That's a couple of tough nuts to run up to Jerry for three yards, but he did it. Absolutely. Well, you see here, it's man-to-man -man coverage, but Terry Daniels, number 24, is back. He doesn't really come up on this receiver like he should. Misses the tackle. Then it's Johnson and Holmes have to come up and make the stop. So it's first down, just over the 30 for Jacksonville. Rozier going left. There's a pretty good move there as Mike Rozier. Sawyer's shut off on a sweep left, cut it back inside and runs it to the 40. He was cut off, Keith. He was cut off completely from going to the outside. Kyle Borland and company linebackers, great pursuit. Watch it here. But they over pursue. You see him taking off quickly to the outside. Now one little move right there, Keith. He stops, cuts it inside. The over pursuit causes a hole, a cutback. He finds it to pick up the big game, making it second and short. Second and one. At nine yards, he now has 57 in the ball game. And 10 carries. He's got the first down. Emmanuel Weaver, the nose tackle, got him out of South Carolina. But it'll be first down. Here's Terry Beeson, inside backer now for Jacksonville with Tim Brandt. Terry, coming into the ball game, you wanted to cut off all the running lanes to Herschel. He's still picking up some yards. Looks like he's carrying a pretty good punch today. He's running well. He's running a good lean. He's picking his holes real well. He's following his blockers well. I think we're going to have to do to continue to uh, to stop him and not let him get any big yards is just continue to fly around the ball, continue to get upfield and uh, cause him to have to cut back into our pursuit we can make the play. They're moving their tight ends around to try to confuse you guys. Any problems? No, not really. They did tried it early and they uh, tried to get a shift in our secondary coverage and whatnot so that uh, they try to get us in his zone coverage and work once down there and uh, we've got to straighten down there. All right, Keith. Thank you. On first and ten from the 41, Luther wants to go big with it for Matthews. Matthews is run over. Penalty flag on the ground. It'll be Jacksonville's ball, 15 yards downfield, first down. Kerry Justin ran over him just about the time he was curling back in to make the catch. Now, Kerry Justin was about to uh, have a little man just breeze right by him, yes, Keith. he was. Because when that ball was put up in the end, number 82, Pass Aubrey Matthews, Defense. was number 26. Underneath the coverage of Terry Justin. As the ball continued its flight, he was making up ground, coming past. Now watch Justin. Justin knows he's going to make this catch. He doesn't even look at the ball. He throws his hand up in the air, makes the contact to stop what he feels would have been a touchdown right there. You see, he can't even see the ball, Keith. He's just anticipating it there because Aubrey Matthews put his hands up. Here, the 15-yard penalty and a first down for Jacksonville puts it on the New Jersey 44. In the NFL, that ball goes down there inside the 15. And if Terry Justin hadn't put his hand up, Keith, like he was knocking the football down, they would have called it intentional and it would have been down there. True. Rozier, Mason, Mason it is, Larry Mason. And there's nothing there for the 205-pounder out of Troy State. Manuel Maybe Weaver. second down and ten. Emmanuel Weaver, no doubt, a real good job, Keith, staying at home, fending off the block of the center. The principal people in the ball game on both sides have been the running back, Rozier and Earl Walker have carried on 17 of the 31 offensive plays for the two teams. So second down and ten from the 44. Penalty flag might be an encroachment call. Luther may have a free play. 
gets it to the sidelines to Perry Kemp, and Kemp is out of bounds at the 25. It was either motion or encroachment along the line of scrimmage. It will be against New Jersey. They'll refuse it. Offside. Defense. Number 74. Penalty is declined. First down. Glad to hear Ted Humphrey back in good voice. He's over the laryngitis. This, in effect, was a free play, and Kemp made it a big one down to the 25. He had man-to-man -man coverage, this time by the strong safety, John Preston. Preston playing off, giving him room, feeling he probably doesn't have the speed to keep up with them, became the victim as the cushion allowed Kemp to become wide open on the sideline. Rozier is not out there. Well, the doctor right now is looking at him. He's off the field. It's a first down for Jacksonville. New Jersey 25. Give it to Mason. And a penalty flag is thrown by the umpire who lines up in the defensive secondary. The play is good for about five yards, but let's see about the call. All the linemen, Keith, were moving that and the wave downfield. He stood his ground to throw that flag. Holding. Offense, number 75, still first down. Tough call for the Bulls. Wipes out the five yards and brings them back 10, so it'll be first and 15. Number 75, Bob Gruber. Mike Rozier, we're told, had taken a finger in the eye, but apparently he's going to be all right. Well, he's been nicked a lot since he left Nebraska. It ain't been easy. No. <laughs> Playing with the big boys. <laughs> I said it'd be 15. It's actually first and 20 after the 10-yard uh, penalty for holding. The snap comes from the 35. Luther with good protection to the sidelines, and Aubrey Matthews can't hold on to it. The wind is blowing sort of diagonally and along the route of that pass. And though Luther had it good tight spiral on his pass, the wind may be affecting it a little bit. I was down on the field before the game, and it seemed to gust up from time to time. I don't know how much it will affect the ball. Maybe Timmy can find out for us and uh, give us a report. If he'd been turned instead of uh, duck putting it backwards, he probably could have had enough leverage to get up in the air and catch it. But he was kind of flat-footed going backwards. Also, number 52, Mike Weathington playing underneath. The ball had to go a little higher to get over his head. Second down and 20. Blitz on. Luther gets it off. Good to the sideline. Good to Perry Kemp at the inside the 15, close to a first down. He got in front of Terry Daniels again. Did a very good job. Terry Daniels coming in. And a nickel coverage. Ed Luther, Keith, is now doing something that... He couldn't have possibly been able to do when he first came to the team. He's under pressure. The receiver is not really open here, but he anticipates him coming open. Lays the ball out there, gives him a chance to run for it. Leads him to just a little open area, just short of the first down. Curry Kemp adjusted to the ball extremely well to make the catch. Luther now 8 out of 12 and 72 yards. Matthews comes out of the ball game for Jacksonville. They go double wide set this time with uh, Robert Young, an extra tight end in the alignment. And it's first down at the New Jersey 15. This is Larry Mason looking for a hole, and he got something out of it. Number 50, Kyle Bolin was after him, and uh, Mason realized he couldn't get by Bolin going in the middle, and so he went outside and picked up three. Mason figured he couldn't get to the outside, Keith. He had Gruber, number 75, as a lead blocker for him. It looked like he was going to open up, but he made a judgment, made a decision to try and dip in the inside. When he did that, he saw nothing but white jerseys, tried to readjust, but it was too late. Mason and Lewis are the setbacks now. Second down and seven from the 12. Luther down the middle, throws the ball behind Mark Keel, who begs his case against Gregory Johnson. He was looking for Keel, figuring Keel might be able to handle Johnson physically, but in the process, he had Alton Alexis open up in the deep left corner. Didn't see it. I think Keel went to his left, reeled one way, and Ed Luther thought he would go the other. 
Gregory Johnson's a little upset because I think he felt the kill pushed off a little bit on that move. You see right there, he was there, there was very close coverage until the ball was thrown. Third and seven from the 12. the ball running a little curve uh, slant pattern in the short zone drop the ball and there's a penalty flag from one of the linesmen it's against New Jersey encroachment defense number 52 still third down so Mike Weddington got into the neutral zone and they'll mark off five yards It'll be third down and two and a half, roughly. Well, the penalty would go on in the books as, a, as one penalty for five yards, but should they convert on this third down play, that one penalty will have cost the New Jersey Generals defense a touchdown or a field goal. Third and two. Got to go just inside the five to get their first down. Luther will throw for it and throws it out of bounds over the end zone. He looked that way. He had two people over there, but nobody available. So he threw it in the seats, and that'll bring out the place kicker, Ryan Franco, with a chance to tie it at 7.51 to go in the first half. Well, they were trying to run levels, Keith, and throw one guy back deep, but uh, the defensive secondary pushed everybody up front. What does Brian Franco say about the wind early, Timmy? Well, there is plenty of gust down here, and if he was kicking the other way, he said there'd be tremendous concern. But with the wind that is back here, he doesn't think it'll be a factor. If anything, like you said earlier, it'll be an asset, like it was on the other side for the Generals. 24-yard try here out of Swider's hold. It's up, and it's good. So we're all even at 10. The Jacksonville Bulls and the New Jersey Generals. With seven minutes and 47 seconds play in the first half. And a crowd of more than 60,000 appears watching. Outlaws making a game of it at Baltimore, trailing now by a point in the second quarter. Oakland 7-0 over Orlando as Fred Bassana hooked up with Derek Holloway for 53 yards. Bassana in there instead of Hebert. And Denver goal 14-3 over San Antonio in the second quarter. Here it's a 10-10 ball game. 7.47 to play in the second quarter. And Franco kicks off to New Jersey. And uh, Pegues has some trouble handling it. And comes back right around the 20. They'll mark him at the 19. Well, let's see if Walt decides now to try something a little different. I don't know why he would. Because the way Walker has been hammering away and running over people in the ball game. We got a timeout call on this sunny day in Jacksonville. Flutie will come out and we'll snap it in a moment. The New Jersey Generals will go to work from their 19 in a 10-10 ball game. Their first scores both affected from accepting the ball at the Jacksonville 39. New Jersey so far in the game has run only 10 plays. He's having a day. He comes to the Gator Bowl and, and he's jacked up just thinking about coming down here. I had never seen him play a bad ball game. Here. In fact, he's had some spectacular games. He's run for 50 yards so far today on six carries. If Herschel continues to run like this, Keith, he's going to make it a lot easier for the wide receivers on this team to get open. When he turned the corner and went downfield, number 22, Dan Jakes, who had a real punishing hit on the tight end from Birmingham last week, came flying up. Herschel gave him a little shoulder and just flipped him around and laid him on the ground. First down, the ball is out of the 33. Walker again. He got 
past the linebacker, number 50, Terry Beeson, but the other trailing backer, Vaughn Johnson, brought him down. But even though, it's close to a five-yard pickup. Vaughn Johnson out of NC State. Take a look from our ground-level camera at Herschel carrying the ball. Herschel, you see Maurice Carthen doing a little cleanup work right there. Now watch Herschel just lower his shoulder here. He lowers that shoulder, picks up another three yards, and punishes just a little bit that time, a linebacker. Four yards, second down and six. This time it goes to Carthen, and Carthen gets outside on the corner, and he's close to a first down. Diving through and almost getting a piece of him before he got started was Vaughn Johnson. But it was up to the defensive end, Curtis Anderson from Central State, who played last year for the Oklahoma team. Vaughn Johnson's a real fast linebacker, Keith. He'll fly around there. You see there his height, 6'3", 235. Plays great intensity. You always see him around the ball, always looking to make the play. Third down and about a half a yard. General's grinding it out right here. 50 to go for a Walker and I don't know he may have it I think that he does third effort I think probably got it for him now Beeson comes in with Johnson and they both had solid licks on him but to give you an idea how strong he is he took the first shot took the second shot and then went right on ahead and picked up the yard for the first down that's a good low running posture, Keith. He's got that shoulder down, he's running low, but he's not off balance. So when he makes contact, he's in good position to take the hit right there. He keeps his leg driving. You see right there, putting his hand down before the knees to get the extra half yard, half foot for the first down. Flutie on first down, rolls it out. Throws it up for grabs, and it's almost picked off by Beeson. Oh boy. That was a very poor decision by Doug. <laughs> Lucky to get it back. The way he scrambled around there, Keith, reminded me of an old comedy routine that Richard Pryor did, talking about little tiny feet Blair, just scurrying all around. Now watch Blair, him start. He'll stop and watch him pivot right here, spin again, and just get the ball off barely. A little quick wrist action as he's buried under three tacklers for the Jacksonville Bulls. Second down and ten. Realized he was going to take the hit, so what does he do? Plant both feet and takes him for a ride. Tournament of Champions Tennis. Here's Flutie rolling out and gets away and a lick out of bounds, and I'm sure that's a penalty. I don't think it will be, Keith. Although hit him way out of bounds. Beeson came flying through, and he was three, looked like he was three yards out of bounds. What Beeson was trying to do that time, Keith, was trying to come up and get Flutie before he got to that first down marker. He had a bead right on it. You see Walt Michael gesturing with the elbow, saying he threw a bone, an elbow, but no flags are being thrown. Beeson was just trying to come up to make that stick. He had a bead on that yard marker, and so did Doug Flutie. And in his aggressiveness, he just went through and, fell, and followed through with the shot. You see right there, he fakes it. And watch where Beeson comes in, right there. Clearly out of bounds, though. Well, the, the, the hit, he's still right there on the sideline, Keith. Well, you're right, no flag. 45-yard line of Jacksonville. 4-10 to play in the first half. Broke through the first tackle and picked up better than five yards on the carry. Once again, it was Terry Beeson. And Joe Johnson, the strong safety, coming up. The question, I suppose, is whether or not the man can keep carrying the ball like this. There's Mike Rozier, who missed the last series because of a finger in his eye. But the answer to the question of can Walker do this all day is yes, he can. Oh, he certainly can. I mean, he's done it in games so far this year. He's only 23 years old, and Walt Michael said he's just coming into his maturity as a running back. Herschel again. Beeson can't get him. 
And he steps out of bounds beyond the marker, and that'll be another first down before Keith Millard finally got over there and pushed him out. Now, Keith, you just saw, you see a coach on the sideline right there from Jacksonville jumping up and down, ranting and raving. You see right there, number 93, Keith Millard being upset. Sam Bowers came back and cracked, cracked someone. I think it might have been Millard while Hershey was running the ball. Now, when you've got a great running attack and you're going to keep the ball on the ground, what happens to your receivers? Your receivers turn in the blockers downfield. And the whole time, they're going to be looking for those people to hit. There's going to be the difference between Herschel and Maurice running 10 yards or maybe breaking the big one for a touchdown. From the 34 now, Walker with 74 yards on 11 carries. It's first down New Jersey as Flutie stands up, delivers in a hurry. And it was intended for Collins, Clarence Collins out there, pretty much by himself, really. Johnson was coming up, but a ball might have been tipped. Might have been tipped. Been tipped. Looked like he got the ball out there, Keith, just too far beyond Collins to uh, make, it, make an attempt on it. A quick out pattern, as we call it in the Pittsburgh, is a real tough one to throw because the receiver has to run towards that sideline, away from coverage, yet turn his shoulders and head all the way back into the backfield to see the ball. Carthen, a yard maybe, no more than that. I tell you, Bob Nelson is clogging up that middle pretty well. Nose tackle for Jacksonville. He's one of the keys to that defensive team if they're going to have any success at all, Keith, in trying to stop Herschel Walker. We may not call his name off a lot in today's ball game as a man making the tackle, but what he has to do is really engage Ken Hull, tie up blockers along that line of scrimmage, and allow areas where the linebackers can come up and fill and make the tackles. Third down and nine. throw into the end zone for Broughton incomplete one two three four bulls back there if Duck Flutie Keith had been able to anticipate that one throw it a little bit sooner he would have had them wide open because he had gotten behind the secondary the Duck scrambling or rolling out stopped to turn and throw by the time he let the ball go the people in the secondary were able to come over and react to it you see right here Right-handed, he had to stop, get his body turned around. The receiver's behind everyone. Number 26 is Chester Gee. He comes up trying to make the play. Couldn't time it out for the interception. Flutie is one out of six in the punt. Rick Partridge averaging 39. And that's in the end zone. Mm, I don't know. New Jersey may have knocked it down short of the goal line. There's a penalty flag back here. John Preston coming down was able to stop it just short of the goal line. And Preston hit a high nine. The ball came down and just hit <laughs> right there. It's put down at the one. We'll check the penalty when we come back. There's a professional football league that believes having fun is the most important business at hand. where football is still a game. Pretty good job of using Kentucky windage on that <laughs> field goal by Roger Ruzek for the 13 to 10 lead now, and New Jersey will kick off to Jacksonville. And Arizona's gone out 16-14 over Baltimore in the second quarter. Oh, sliding kick. Handled by Matthews at the six-yard line. And Aubrey gets back near the 27. Aubrey out of Delta State, 5'7 and 170, and uh, they say down around Delta State, quick as a hiccup. 7'7, <laughs> seven, seven, Oakland, Orlando now in the second quarter. There was a lady I was walking down the fairway in, in uh, Walla Walla Country Club. Walla Walla Country Club? Washington. Walla Walla, Washington. A lady walked up and said, I laughed at your... Uh, tell Lynn Swan that when you have a ball game like Raleigh had, your buttermilk does taste bitter. <laughs> People are listening. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing. My buttermilk always tastes bitter because I can't stand that stuff. I yeah, know. <laughs> We've hit the two-minute mark now. A 13-10 ball game, New Jersey. Cashing in a five-yard penalty call, which got him just close enough for the field goal. 
And now the Jacksonville Bulls will try to respond. Tampa Bay won last night out in Los Angeles. And they are 8-3. and three. New Jersey has to win today to retain a share of the lead. And New Jersey's at home against Baltimore, while Tampa Bay will come to Jacksonville next Sunday. And Houston will be at Memphis next Sunday. Three very attractive games. Memphis played very well in the win. Reggie White particularly had a big ball game, and Mike Kelly now has been able to get the Memphis offense moving. Well, the Memphis Showboats and the Jacksonville Bulls playing very good football right now, Keith. Uh, can be the two, I don't want to call them dark horses, but throw a wrench into this whole schedule. I thought Memphis the was going to be a good one all along. I, all they needed to get the, uh, the lost Williams, a fine running back. Spencer's been dinged up. Here's Luther going to the air. Gets Alexis out there one-on-one, -on -one, and he gets away from two people and picks up a first down to the 42. Well, these Jacksonville receivers are spunky. Alton Alexis doing a real good job. <laughs> People upset. He's doing a real good job. It's just a real quick pattern. You see Perry going downfield, clearing out the zone. Here's coming number 24, Daniels. He misses. Alton spins from him, makes someone else miss. Luther again goes to the sidelines and tumbling out of bounds, stopping the clock at 139 is Alexis again. And that pickup is worth about six yards. Remember, the wind is at the back of the Jacksonville Bulls, so if they get on down around the 30 or so, they'll go to the foot themselves and try to tie it. I think so. We got the wind behind you. Franco's coming off a good game of last week. He hit the ball well in his field goal try here, so you just go with him. The clock's working in your favor. Second down, four and a half. Luther down the middle for Kemp, just a little bit too high. Perry was available in front of Gray, uh, John Preston, but he just could not stretch his 5'11 frame that high. He's out of Cal State in Pennsylvania, Keith, California look, State. Keith, look where the linebackers are. The linebackers are 15 yards downfield from the line of scrimmage. Luther's got to throw that ball high just to get over their heads. That's what makes the play so difficult to complete. short five they send the backer up the middle but Luther gets away and completes the pass to about the 46 yard line to his tight end Mark Keel. Mark Keel catching the ball in front of a strong safety in most defensive alignments you'll find the strong safety playing the tight end. So right there he did a great job a little swim technique getting inside of Preston. Preston concentrating on the inside because he lost him then Keel just rolls to the outside. Luther picks him up. First down on the 46 as Ed drops back to throw again and again has good protection. Goes down the middle to Kemp and this time Perry hangs on. And it's first down Jacksonville at the New Jersey 32 with 112 to play in the first half. The receivers, Keith, are showing me surprising toughness. You see here, watch the catch number 85, Perry Kemp. He catches it. Preston doesn't really hit him. He just kind of pushes him. Leopold tries to push him. Nobody put their shoulders into the hit. Luther back, gets it away. It is Mark Peel that ties Larry Mason out of the backfield, 32. And he goes inside the 20 for another first down for the Jacksonville Bulls with 59 seconds to play in the first half. And the clock stops as the chains are moved, and now Jacksonville will spend the timeout as Luther comes to the sidelines to talk. So they're not thinking field goal at all. They're thinking about sticking in the end zone. It is inside the 20 at the 19. The Bulls have two timeouts remaining. I think at the outside, you have to think the bare minimum we can try and get out of this is three points. But with the success they're having now in their passing attack, Ed Luther finding his big tight end downfield, Alton Alexis turning in some good plays, and now picking up the backs coming out, moving the ball very easily and very well in, in, in traffic downfield. Well, they've made up their mind now as to what they want to try to do and what they're doing ain't that bad. Ain't bad at all. Rozier is not in there. Luther back. Real 
pressure coming that time. Number 52, Mike Weddington, was coming from the outside, and Frank Mattiase was coming up the middle. And finally, the pocket collapsed on Ed Luther. But that's really the first time that the generals have been able to fight through and get to the quarterback. That's true. Although Ed Luther did not play a lot while he was playing for the San Diego Chargers, he had a chance to see San Diego move the ball in the air quite a bit downfield on the similar passing system under pressure. And maybe he's picked up some of that vicarious experience, Keith, and I think he's fairly cool under this pressure. Matthews coming wide to the bottom of the picture. Up the middle it goes with Marvin Lewis. And nothing there for Marvin, a loss of about two yards. 225-pound big back out of Tulane. But uh, just nothing doing on that one. Jacksonville spends another time out. They've got one remaining, and time remaining is 48 seconds in the first half. Third down. Ten yards to go. New Jersey's defense, Keith, I'm sure will just... Whether they play man-to-man -man or zone, they'll drift back, try and make sure that the receivers do not get anywhere close to that end zone and that first yard marker, forcing them into a fourth down and a field goal situation. The trainer and the doctor are both standing alongside of Rozier. The trainer talking to him now. Mike has not been able to come back into the ball game since he took that finger in the eye. Tim Brandt, can you tell us more? Keith, I just talked to Dr. Lucy down here, the team doctor, and it is more than they thought in that left eye. It is an abrasion on his cornea. They are going to check it further at halftime, but they are keeping him out the rest of this half, as you mentioned and that you noticed. But it is an abrasion of the cornea. Be careful with that. Bring out the goggles. Ball is back near the 21, where it's third down and close to 12. the corner no Ken Johnson covering Alton Alexis and Alexis had a few choice words for the man in the striped shirt he thought that Kenny had run over him but it'll bring up fourth down and bring Brian Franco out to try a field goal at 42 seconds to play so Jacksonville came back after New Jersey's field goal but they got as far as the 19 and stopped. Defense has plugged everything up. Played tough when they had to. Now, right now, they'd like to claim another victory and keep the three points off the board. 38-yard try. Wind at his back. He hit one from 24. Larry Swider is the holder. Robert Young, the tight end, the snapper. Franco's kick is up and away and good. So the New Jersey Generals jump out to a 10-0 lead. Jacksonville comes back to tie it. Generals make it 13-10, and now the Bulls have come back to tie it again. Well, the defense held, but it was field position that prevailed in the case, in this case, for the Jacksonville Bulls, having driven the ball downfield far enough to make it what seemed to be a fairly easy field goal for Franco. Despite the, the power running of uh, Walker today, New Jersey has not put together a long march. No, they haven't. And if they are going to win this ball game by the, by the way that Jacksonville has played so far in this first half, they're going to have to do just that. Control the ball and the game with their offense as Jacksonville has done. Also with Rozier out of the ball game, it seems that Lindy Infante, the head coach of the Jacksonville Bulls, has gone strictly to his passing attack. Team. Kick is fielded short by Clarence Harmon, a running back. And Harmon is brought down at the 34-yard line with 33 seconds to play. I'll tell you one thing, they have used all of the two minutes, haven't they? <laughs> well, 33 seconds. Doug Flutie, 5'9". I guess at some point in time in his college career, he had to be every football fan's hero with some of the comebacks he led that college team to against Alabama, against Miami.
Walker with the ball. And he's got a first down as he goes from the 34 to the 45. 11 yards. Took him 15 seconds to uh, make up his mind and weave down the field to pick up that first down. Walker by the two. They wind the clock on the first down now. And it's inside 20. Give it to Herschel again. And not much this time. A couple of yards. And I thought they might choose to go to the air that time. Now you, you would think so. they would, but rely mostly, mostly on Herschel Walker. They're going to the clubhouse all even at halftime, 13 to 13. And we'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message and the word from our local station. We're involved with a good football game here at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida with the Bulls and the New Jersey Generals all even at 13-13 at halftime. On Friday night, the Birmingham Stallions lost their second in a row as the Memphis Showboats came up with a big effort behind Mike Kelly, who was 21 out of 28, and beat the Stallions 38 to 24. And then last night out in Los Angeles, the Tampa Bay Bandits behind John Reeves, 314 yards, beat the Los Angeles Express by a score of 24 to 14. So Tampa Bay goes 8 and 3 in the Eastern Conference and will have a share of first place if New Jersey should win here in Jacksonville or if New Jersey loses, then the Bandits are going to be sitting there all by themselves at 8 and 3. We've talked a lot here in the first half about the kind of year that Herschel Walker is having. There's a definite reason for it. Jim Lampley visited with Herschel in New Jersey and here are some of their comments. Suddenly, it is as though it is the autumn of 1980 again, and the Herschel Walker, who as a 19-year-old freshman turned the sport of college football on its ear, has reappeared in the uniform of the general. He remains perhaps the swiftest man of his size ever to play the game, but four long seasons had gone by since he last punished tacklers the way he does now. It might have happened sooner had he not kept putting off a much-needed shoulder operation. I just didn't want to have surgery. I didn't want to get cut on. And uh, I got to the point last year where I realized that I needed an operation. I separated the shoulder more than four times. And, uh, you know, a lot of physicians had told me that if I separated too much, it couldn't be corrected. It couldn't, could not be fixed. And when the season was over, I thought I could strengthen it on my own. I thought I could do it myself. And I tried it for a few weeks, and I realized at that point that there was no help. I couldn't do anything. I needed surgery, and I went, went in the uh, end of July and had it fixed. Herschel first damaged his left shoulder on this play in Georgia's national title clinching win over Notre Dame in the 1981 Sugar Bowl. Then he suffered in silence while his game softened and his reputation took a public beating. You know, people criticize me. Well, criticizing is very easy. And I always say if everyone could get paid for talking, everyone would be rich. And in the same standpoint, I just go out and just play my best. And the coaches knew what was going on. And they, they was happy with my performance and what I could do. And, you know, I realized that I, at the end of the season, I can try to put some kind of thing to correct that. It's been written this past week that you are locked up via your personal services contract with Donald Trump until 1989. Is that true? Yes, that's true. No escape clause at all? Well, I probably could if I wanted to. Uh, but then, you know, like I said, I came into this league with the standpoint that I'm going to try to stick it out no matter what. You know, when I made my mind up that I'm going to do it, that's that's what I am. I'm sort of, sometimes I'm a man of my word. There's only a few times I may go back on it. If he were free to negotiate now, he might earn even more than the $1.2 million he is being paid to play this season. But he claims he'll pay little attention to having been drafted by the NFL's Dallas Cowboys. Uh, the Cowboys was something that my older brothers was always mentioning around the house. And I was very happy to see that they drafted me in the same standpoint. I really didn't care because uh, my mind was really focused on right now that we got a good chance of winning a championship in the USFL right now. And I really didn't want to you know, sway my thinking in it, in it somewhat. I didn't want to get off track. 
Our cameras first visited Herschel Walker in Athens, Georgia nearly five years ago. The intervening years have improved his vocabulary and polished his presentation, but he still says the same things, particularly about the public recognition which has surrounded him each step of the way. I really never think about fame before I didn't think about it because I say uh, I've been supported by a lot of great people and I think a lot of people have made me what I am and I think uh, a lot of athletes, a lot of entertainers must realize that people, they're the one who make you what you are. You don't make yourself what you are unless you have the right attitude and you meet the, the right people. But you've got to be nice to people and they're the one who really make me what I am. Well, he's had a big first half here in the ball game against the Jacksonville Bulls. And just to footnote uh, that area of conversation there about what might happen in the future, I should remind you the Dallas Cowboys drafted Herschel in the NFL draft this past week. So if and uh, when uh, the opportunity comes for him to make a move, then obviously he's got a place to go. But in visiting very briefly with him earlier today, he indicates, as he said in his uh, interview with Jim Lampley, that he's going to stay right Right where he is. We still don't have a final count on the crowd, but it's got to be, I would think, in excess of 60. We noted that the teams have a touchdown apiece and a couple of field goals. The first field goal, 3-0 New Jersey. Franco, a big one from 49 yards. And then the New Jersey touchdown to give them a 10 to nothing lead in the ball game went from Flutie to Sam Bowers, the tight end. Well, they took over an excellent field position after a good run by Herschel Walker. And the everyone keyed, Doug Flutie, ran the play action pass play, faking it to Herschel Walker and finding Sam Bowers, who was open big in between two defenders in the Jacksonville secondary. And you see his powers. He drafts two people into the end zone. Four. The Heisman, Heisman Trophy people on the other side, Jacksonville, they have Mike Rozier out in the front. And here's as good a run as you're going to want to see from 23 yards. I don't care what any player says to us, Keith, or to the press when they talk about a situation like this, but when you get people of this kind of talent playing on the same field together, it will always make you play a little bit tougher. And Rozier answered the challenge of Herschel Walker by coming back with a brilliant 23-yard run. Franco adding two field goals, and that's where we are, 13-13 at halftime. Now, last year, these two teams went right down to the last few seconds, and uh, Danny Miller, who now kicks for the Birmingham Stallions, was involved in in the game a year ago and he tried a field goal to win it and it was so close. It was a game that we thought that New Jersey was actually uh, not going to win and it came down to this field goal very close and they lost it. It's still interesting that that official on that side of the uh, goal post slipped and fell and I and Miller certainly Danny wondered and so did Lindy and Fonte and so did we as to whether or not he had a real good clear call on it. Look at it again and you'll see how close it is. <laughs> well certainly he felt that it should have been called good. Of course with the instant replay and the red flag challenges they can have now I'm sure if they had one in that ball game last year they would have used it. I don't think the officials would have changed that call one bit though last year giving New Jersey the win. No I don't think so either. And no reason to. Judgment after all has to play a role in this whole scheme of things. What about the ball game? What do you think about the second half? Well, I think the second half, we're going to have to see one of these teams play better defense. So far, the game has been controlled by the offensive teams of both Jacksonville possessing the football, running it down the field, and New Jersey's points have come because their offense is an excellent field position. We have not seen them drive down the field. If their offense doesn't make a long drive in the second half, Jacksonville could wind up winning the game because they've controlled it with their offense. Well, now, Walker has had a big first half. Flutie, on the other hand, has not. Flutie has not because Herschel Walker has, and uh, he hasn't had to become a big factor in the ball game yet. The touchdown to Sam Bowers is the kind of thing I think we'll see in the second half as Herschel Walker continues to play. One of the key factors, however, will be the absence of Rozier. A scratch corner in the first half. If we do not see him in the second half, then we're going to see the Jacksonville Bulls put the ball in the air consistently because the running attack has hurt greatly without Rozier. Okay, that's uh, comments of Lynn Swan. We're about ready to go with the second half of play in a 13-13 tie. Back after this message and the word from our local station. I might suggest to you as we have the opening kickoff of the second half, this could be a very big defensive series for Jacksonville or offensive series for New Jersey. Generals have shown a history of taking a second half kickoff and taking it down the field. The geese on the run back will give them a good starting point up around the 31-yard line. 
Now Mike Rozier's condition. Here's Tim Brent. Mike, I just saw him testing you, trying to read the scoreboard. How bad is it? It's all right. I just got poked in the, the last half and uh, went in and they put some eye drops in it. They numbed it up a little bit. It helped me. I, I can see a lot better now. I don't have to blink a lot during the game. Lindy kept you out the last part of the last half. Will he play you now? Yeah, I'm going to play. I've got to play. All right, Keith. Got to play. That's the attitude. They put these mark on the 30-yard line, and that's where the Generals will go with first down. Two, where Joe Johnson, strong safety out of Notre Dame, takes him down. That time the defensive line, Keith, had great penetration, and they were able to stop things behind the line of scrimmage in the backfield before Herschel could really get ahead of steam, but he was still able to pick up a couple yards. Four yards yeah, and a half. Two is a whole lot better if you're a defender than the eight and nine. <laughs> a heck of a lot better. again another yard I don't know Joe Costello outside linebacker who came slanting back into the middle met him Joe Bone to Joe Bone watch the defensive line now watch them engage the offensive line hold positions and the linebackers feel right there looked like Maurice Carthen was trying to block someone who didn't really make the tackle missed him but Costello was able to feel penetrate the hole and make the stop Third down and a long seven. It's actually close to seven and a half. Ludy gets it off to Clarence Harmon, and Harmon has the first down at the 41. So Clarence Harmon, who comes in on the passing situation, a good receiver, just drifted out into the flat. Ludy laid it gently on his hands, and he picked up the first down. The other receiver's moving well downfield creating some distance between themselves and line of scrimmage, allowing the defensive zones to open up. Joe Johnson made a good tackle, but it was after the first down was attained. They got a walker now. In a slot. They give it to Carthen. And Carthen is going to have about seven yards on that carry as he gets up to about the Jacksonville 48. Well, it seems a second half, early second half strategy, Keith, is to fake the handoff, not literally, but Who's hurt? Oh, Sam Bowers, I think, Sam down Bowers. there, holding his leg. A little misdirection play, then give it to Carthen going back uh, against the grain. He picked up some good yardage doing it, but it may have been a very costly play. We'll take a look. Sam Bowers is number 89. You see him right there going down for block. Just looks like he was rolled over from behind by Carthen as he was about to make a tackle or a block. It's the right knee, a knee that Sam has had some trouble with previously. So we've got a timeout for Sam Bowers. Sam Bowers, big guy out of Fordham, got up and trotted off the field. So no real damage apparently to the knee. And it's New Jersey's football, second down and three at the Jacksonville, uh, at their own 48-yard line. Jacksonville shows a five-man front now. Walker is the deep man. And he's got it. And he's got the first down. He will be at the Jacksonville 48 for four yards on that carry. So this is now a pretty much a typical New Jersey effort here as they're crushing the ball down the field. And uh, it's the kind of a play that can really damage it. Uh, it's the kind of play that Walt Michaels is happy about when you see Herschel Walker taking those short runs with two, three, four yards straight down the field. That's the kind of running he's been trying to get Herschel Walker to do for the last two years. Grinds up this kind of a drive, grinds up the clock, wears down a defense. Rudy is back to throw, gets it away down, and good, around the 29-yard line to Walter Broughton. So it's the first time today Walter has been able to catch one, only the second time the ball's been thrown to it. Walter Broughton, he was a backup receiver, then came on in the game early in the season to play very, very well, replacing Danny Knight, who was a starter out of Mississippi State at the early part of this season. They put him down at the 30 for the first down. Oh, New Jersey. 
marching it down the field to start this third quarter of play. Walker into the stack. They'll give him two on that carry. Keith, there was some excellent on-field coaching going on on that particular play. Uh, you saw the offensive team of New Jersey shifting around, people moving, and number 50, Terry Beeson, was back there from his inside linebacker position telling his people to move around, talking about the tight end flex, having his defensive line people shift over. He looked down, touched Bob Nelson, number 65, told him, look for the gap on the inside, and what do you know, the play comes right to him. Second down and eight. Flutie getting some pressure. They've got him. They got him all the way back on the New Jersey 48-yard line. It was Van Jake's left corner. Jake's, Costello. All in on play. Number 48, Joe Johnson was down there for the finish also. Boy, that's guessing right on your blitz. That really is. And what's great about it in terms of the blitz is that it's a straight drop back pass. Had this been a setup for a rollout, Flutie would have been running away from some of these people. But as he was run, dropping straight back, they had the angles on him. He turned one way, one way then turned the other. And number 22, Jakes, is right there. Well, they've called him in the grasp at the 46 of Jacksonville. 18-yard loss. shotgun they give it a Herschel Walker on a sweep and nothing doing well that'll bring up a fourth down and I don't believe that's within the range of Ruda well Keith you mentioned it right at the top it's going to have to be a great drive by New Jersey as they often do come out in the second half with an excellent defensive effort by Jacksonville that may be one of the most critical plays here in the second half to determine the outcome of this game all right, if the generals had taken it down and stuck it in the end zone, you certainly would have known Old Mo was wearing a white shirt. Rick Partridge spins it high and knocks it out of the end zone. But in the process of that possession, Herschel Walker now has gone over 100 yards. He has 101 on 18 carries, and it's the eighth time that he's gained 100 yards in a game this season. You know, when it comes to being a champion, size isn't everything. Who knows better than Doug Flutie? The main thing is you gotta be tough. Like this small size Ford Ranger. It packs plenty of V6 power up here. No other small V6 pickup beats it for power. And down here, there's independent front suspension. Real tough. Okay, go long. And the Ranger's cab is high and wide. Hey, do that again, Doug. What do you want, another miracle? <laughs> Good ball game in Baltimore. Arizona still leading by two. They're early in the third quarter of that one. 7-7 Oakland Orlando in the third quarter. And Denver now out to 21-9 over San Antonio in the third quarter. Ed Luther brings him up with Mike Rozier back in the ball game at the deep back position. And Mike's got it. Picks up a couple of yards, moving from the 20 out close, maybe to the 23. That little note you saw on Ed Luther. When Ed first took over the offense, when Brian Sight was hurt early, coming over from San Diego, he had a terrible time. One ball game, he was intercepted five times, had nine interceptions in two games. And then two games ago, uh, against Oakland, uh, Orlando it was, uh, he got things put together and uh, had a very outstanding game last week. And is doing the same again today. Second down, and about seven. On a throw, sideline pattern, ball goes to Alexis, and Alexis is gonna be a yard or so short of his first down as he tried to turn up field against Bobby Leopold, and that's a mismatch, because Alton weighs uh, 185 and Bobby 230. Certainly does, it's a short pass, I don't think he was a primary receiver. You see, he lets everybody clear out and just drifts under the linebackers. Ed Luther picks him out, feeling much more comfortable with the system, as you were alluding to, Keith, and all the problems he had early in the season. He was able to look downfield, make the proper read, and find out to 
and Alexis on the sideline. They need a yard and a half to keep the ball on third down. And Rozier will not get it. James Lockett, defensive end, just stepped right into his path. And no way. We're going to move that big 260-pounder. So now comes Larry Swider. Some pressure here on Swider. He had a 24-yard punt from back in that area early in the ballgame. Watch the play here now as Rozier runs into Lockett. Number 96, and looks like both defensive Keith made some adjustments at halftime and come out and played very well in the opening drive. Jacksonville needs a big one here from Swider. Knight standing back just inside his own 35. The wind's going to be a little bit into his face. But he gets a good high hanger. And it takes a Jacksonville bounce and will go inside the 30 and be marked down dead at the 27. So they do get a big punt from Larry Swider with 7 minutes and 43 seconds to go in the third quarter. A 44-yard kick by Larry. Now whose leg do you think that would be? Well, Mike Rozier. Who else? I mean, he's got bad hands. He's been poked in the eye and now dinged on the shin bone. What's next? Something. Something's next. <laughs> it's a full moon. Same kind of thing that's chasing the Brent family right now. Got another young and whacked up yesterday with a broken hey, foot. Now, every time you mention one of Tim's kids getting hurt, they always go out and another one gets hurt <laughs> next week. <laughs> Jason being the latest. All right, first down from the 27. Janet ought to think about moving out and go away for a while. I was asked she could handle all that. It's Walker running hard, and Herschel booms his way across the 30 and up close to the 33. Bob Nelson finally caught him from the back. Your crowd today, largest of the year in the USFL, 60,100. So the Jacksonville franchise continues to prove that folks will come. That'll push their average up, uh, what, 47, 48,000 for the year. I'll tell you, it's one of the, one of the three games when the fans do a wave, you actually know what, what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> Walker again, cuts it back into the middle. And he's close to a first down. The mark looks to me like they will give him the first down. And they will up to 39. Everyone yelling and defense tightened up. Defense has done a good job. Brian Seip standing there on the sideline. We don't anticipate, again, him playing this afternoon. Coach told us yesterday that uh, for a runaway ball game, where the team was way out in front, they way behind, and they were behind because of a quarterback problem, he might play some. Rudy rolls out. Keith Millard hems him in. The pass is thrown down the middle. Pass is caught by Walter Broughton. So the Doug Flutie sidearm delivery. And he drills it downfield to Broughton for a first down. And it's going to be down around the Jacksonville 30, what, 6? Yes. That was 81 just back in number 26, Chester Gee. They were getting into a little shoving match right there. Doug Flutie looked like he wanted to run that ball all the way, Keith. Changed his mind. Had well, a little Millard pressure. had him... Uh, playing him pretty well out there. Yeah, that's why I think Keith Millard, we haven't mentioned his name much because he's had to stay home to look for those things, the cutbacks. On first down, it goes to Walker. And Herschel will get a couple out of that. Maybe three. His man Jakes got him around the leg. They mark the ball in near the 33, so officially it'll go down as a three-yard pickup for Herschel. As Lindy Infante came here from the Cincinnati Bengals, where he was the offensive man. He said coming into this ball game, you can, you can have a game plan, but you have to remain extremely flexible. Be able to adjust and change according to what your opponent is doing. Rudy rolls it out. Goes into the end zone for Collins, and no, didn't have it. He almost wound up in the tunnel. But he didn't have possession on the back line, and guess who was there? The man who became a star last week in the final two minutes, Derek Matisse, number 28. Ah, yes, the man came in last two minutes of the ball game, picked off two passes, returned one for a touchdown. We'll look at Broughton and look at Collins going downfield. You see the contact there. Ball apparently was not in the air, so there was no flag being thrown. 
It was good. One it would have been a foot. great catch. One foot. Well, he didn't have control of it. No. If he had control of it, I think they would have said, and he got that foot down, it would have been a touchdown. Third down and seven. Rudy flush now. And thrown out of bounds. Short of the first down at the 35 by Vaughn Johnson. Well, Keith, I think the defensive teams of both Jacksonville and New Jersey have pulled their backs a little bit. Decided to be more, much more of a factor in this ball game. And on the big plays and both, the, both their drives here in the second half, New Jersey has been stopped by the Jacksonville defense. Ruzek is in the ball game now at 4.45 to go third quarter. And he's setting up for a field goal try with a wind at his back. And it'll be a good one. The ball is put down at the 42. So it's a 52-yarder, his longest attempt. He hit one from 49 for the first score of the ball game. Snap was low. Partridge couldn't get it down. Rick goes up, throws an interception. Number 48, Joe Johnson of Notre Dame gives Jacksonville the ball at the 42. The snap was off the mark. Partridge didn't get a clean hold on it, couldn't get it down for Ruzek. Raised up and tried to throw a pass to Jeff Speck, and Joe Johnson picked it off at 4.35 to go in the third quarter. Keith, I don't know what's happening on the field. There's some kind of conference going down on the field between the officials, a couple of the players. Against New Jersey. Well, it's pretty easy to get a, an illegal block in that kind of a melee because everybody's thrashing around. And so the penalty now is going to move Jacksonville from the 41 where they had marked uh, Johnson down all the way across midfield to the New Jersey 49. So it's a big opportunity here for Ed Luther and company. There's a combination right there as the snap was off the mark. And uh, Rick was wrestling with it and almost got it down, but never did really settle it. And so here's Jacksonville now at the New Jersey 49, first down. Luther back to throw. Good protection. Throws the short man, Field, who takes a hard hit. No, it's Mason. Darn it, I, they both run that same kind of a pattern. One's 82 and one's 32, and they're about the same size. Mason so that did was a good Mason. job hanging on to that one. New Jersey coming up, making a good hit. Someone in the secondary making a good hit. I didn't catch who it was, but unfortunately he didn't wrap his arms around him and bring him down to the ground. Gain is down near the 43. We're at second down and four and a half. Rozier is in there. Too high for Perry Kemp. He had all day. Jacksonville had plenty of time to throw the football. I don't think anyone penetrated at all, Keith, two yards into that backfield into the, uh, of the uh, Jacksonville Bulls. Kemp running more of a delayed route far side of the field. Yeah, the beat man was actually Lewis out of the backfield. Lewis came yeah. running out of the backfield. I had my eyes on him. I thought for a moment he was going to try and hit him, but there was coverage over the top of him. That ball would have been intercepted had he tried to go downfield to Lewis. Now it's third down and a long four. They swing it out to Mike Rozier. He's open and he's inside the 25. Ross Armstrong finally knocked him out of bounds. Keith, that looked like a play that they might have been just saving because Rozier just came so wide open, no one was there to pick him up. And watch number 30, he drifts to his right. Everybody is inside number 53. Uh, Bobby Leopold got trapped. He couldn't come out. Number 26 is Justin. He's just chasing. 
Number 28, Ross Armstrong, and finally gets over and makes the tackle. And the ball is inside the 22, where it's first down Jacksonville. 13-13 tie, third quarter. Rozier can't go. Emmanuel Weaver makes his second big play of the ball game as he decks Rozier a little short of the line of scrimmage. I wonder, Keith, with that injury to his eye, how much he was just training and concentrating on being able to focus into that football, Keith. Or is it his left eye? Yeah, no. left eye. Their loss is back to on the 23. It's a loss of a yard. So it'll be second 11. the middle no Mark Keel the tight end had gone down the middle lost his footing and was kind of on his knees between Leopold and Gregory Johnson still got a hand on it yes he did we'll take a look he almost caught this pass would have been an excellent catch see right there he slips right there he is on his knees comes up a little bit not able to concentrate well enough to bring it in from that position of Leopold and company make him pay a small price Third and 11. Matthew. Now they spread him out. Five wide. <laughs> Little quick pop to Reggie Butts. And he did not get in past the marker. Knocked out of bounds just inside the 20 at the 19. That'll bring up fourth down. And it'll bring in Brian Franco. Trying to untie it at 2.10 to go in the third quarter. Well, he they just put that tee down at the 26, so it's a 36-yarder into the win. He got a good one earlier in the ball game. His confidence is up. Plenty of leg. Got it. So, Brian Franco has hit three field goals today from 24, 38, and now 36. And Jacksonville leads New Jersey 16 to 13. It's a three-point Jacksonville lead. A score from out west. Denver has gone out 28-9 over San Antonio third quarter as Bob Galliano, the Denver QB, is now passed for two touchdowns and run for one. And the kick comes down the sidelines. Oh, my goodness! What are we going to call? Pekis took the ball right on the sidelines, and was he out of bounds when he caught it? Yes, he was. Or was he in bounds and then stepped out of bounds? He was out of bounds, Keith, when he caught it. So that saves New Jersey an embarrassment. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you talk about big mistakes and critical mistakes. That would have been one right there. He just forgot where he was in the sideline. You see right there, he's right on that line and out of bounds when he makes the catch. Fisher right on top of it. It would have been New Jersey's ball right around the 10. But now Jacksonville has penalized five yards as he did catch it out of bounds. <laughs> well, here's where you, <laughs> you get mad, very You're upset. You're on the Jacksonville side, that's got to really get your grumble up. Really. Kickoff return is from Keith, when a ball is kicked with an angle, and it's going towards the sideline, now they just let it go anyway. Well, I think Gase has just had his mind somewhere else. Sailing kick. McGee's takes it at the nine. And is down at the 23. That's pretty good coverage by the Jacksonville Bulls is Mike Edwards, the linebacker out of Oklahoma State. Got downfield to get him. 133 to go, third quarter. Even though he is up and walking around on the sidelines, Sam Bowers apparently has had a tightening and swelling of the knee that he injured and will not play the rest of the day. Doug Flutie in the first half, one out of six for 29 yards. In the second half, he's three out of four for 51. And they will start now from their own 23, trailing 16 to 13. And it's Carson trying to go outside and can't do it. Number 99, Joe Costello. Outside.
outside linebacker. He's a big guy to be playing that outside backer position because normally those outside backers are, are very, very quick. Now look at how big he is, 258. But he's still quick. Well, he's got a 6'3 frame. He carries the weight very well. He's got good speed too, Keith. Winding down toward the end of the third quarter. Loss on the play. Two yards back to the 21. Second down, 12, New Jersey. Flutie. Throws short underneath to Carthen, who had come out of the backfield. He's dropped down on the 30-yard line. That's a pickup of eight yards after the loss of two and leaves them with a third down and three. And that may have been the last snap of the quarter. Indeed, it will be. 15 seconds, and they're letting it roll down. So they'll let the clock run out. The Jacksonville Bulls leading the New Jersey General 16 to 13. The USFL on ABC will continue after this message and a word from our local station. Well, the Jacksonville Bulls got off to a bit of a shaky start. They came off a big upset of Baltimore and then got rattled around some. And they had three big ball games at home. Birmingham, New Jersey, Tampa Bay. They won one already. They're leading in this one. And Herschel Walker banging in for the first down. I don't know. Let's see. I don't think he made it. I think they uh, gave it to him. Oh, look Mark at that Keith. spot. All right, let's go! It's a big yep. spot there. Yeah, he seemed like he lunged over and got it. He got a hit and knocked back. Take a look at the third quarter the statistics. Everything pretty even. And note the time of possession. New Jersey has 24-11 to Jacksonville, 24-49. In the first quarter, it was Jacksonville that started to dominate in time of possession. But the most important thing is that Jacksonville has had most of the good field position throughout the day. Carthen this time with the ball on the first down play. It moves from the 34 out to about the 36. Here's some other scores. Arizona now has gone out 19-14 over Baltimore in the third quarter. And the Oakland Invaders 14-7 over the Orlando Renegades. Denver 28-9 over San Antonio. It's the fourth quarter of play, Keith, and no one team has really taken charge of this ball game. No real big plays have been made. Second down and eight, Flutie gives it to Walker, and Walker twists himself across the 40 to the 41. No big play to say that the 23-yard run by Rozier, and, and of course the defensive stands have been made by both teams. Third and three, Flutie keeps it. Oh, they missed him. Throws his pass to Speck for a first down at the Jacksonville 49. Joe Costello almost got him. He almost did, just missed him. Speck seemed to be running Keith parallel to Doug Flutie downfield, trying to maintain that perspective. You see a little uh, faking a counter play, but notice the defensive people, they're all staying home because they're waiting for Doug Flutie to try and roll out. He tucked the ball away like he was going to run, then saw Speck coming across, pulled it back out. Speck makes a good catch by the control, getting turned around in the air to come down with two feet on the ground. They give him the 48 for the first down. 48-yard line of Jacksonville. Walker running right. Gets a hole over there. Breaks the tackle. Hits the sidelines. And one man, Chester G, kept him from going for six. Oh, we're about to see that low-running locomotive, Keith, get to the outside and take off. He was just away from it. They like to run to the right side. He gets some good blocking. A little holding there, but that's okay. He gets a good block from number 58 Hole who's pulling through there. Now right here he's on his way, but G gets over there in time to drag him down. Ball is just short of the 30-yard line. First down, New Jersey on the Jacksonville side of the field. 12.50 to play in the game. The Bulls lead 16-13. Man, Carthen pops it through the middle. 
G and Johnson bring him down, but it's another New Jersey first down. New Jersey's offensive line seems to have found itself. They're coming off the ball very well now. Carthen getting the big hole, the quick hole, right through the middle, where he has not had very much success before in this afternoon. Ball moves down to the 17 of Jacksonville. Clarence Harmon now is in, replacing Maurice Carthen. Walker to the 14. Good again, offensive line surge by New Jersey. Bob Clasby in at nose tackle right now. Number 91 brought him down. He's the big 260, 260-pounder out of Notre Dame. Herschel Walker now on 25 carries, 146 yards. And he's just racking up the stats, the numbers. Might be a record-breaking season for Herschel Walker in the USFL game. Walker to the right. To about the 10. Oakland now as uh, Bassana has thrown another touchdown pass. Third of the game, 21-7. the score. Bassana playing today instead of Bobby Hebert. It is third down and short four. Carthen comes back in for New Jersey. If New Jersey scores a touchdown here, Keith. This will have been their best drive all afternoon. Carthen to the outside. Touchdown! It's easy to be deceived by that big fellow's speed, but he is, he's got plenty of speed. He doesn't run fluid. He doesn't have that graceful style about his running. But he's an outstanding blocker. He's a strong runner. He doesn't try and give you a lot of fakes. He just takes the play as it was designed to go up the middle, then break it to the outside, steps out of the tackle there, and right into the corner of the end zone. Ruzak now for a very important extra point kick. Good. 10 minutes and 45 seconds to play in the ball game. The New Jersey Generals have gone out to a four-point lead, 28 of 16. We'll take another look at him. Last year, he gained over 1,000 yards. This year, he's in the top 10 in the Eastern Conference in rushing. He is a strong one, Keith. Time remaining in the game, 10.45. Reggie Butts and Aubrey Matthews, the return people for Jacksonville as Ruzek prepares to kick off. Four points, big difference. Three points, field goal can tie. Extra point was very important. That's a low skidding kick that's finally picked up by Norris Brown. Tied in, and look at this! The former Georgia Bulldog is on his way. No flags behind him. Touchdown! Just dropped the brick, Keith. Well, Michaels looked like he was gut shot. <laughs> Norris Brown knows what it is to play in a Gator Bowl. He's been here before. At this time, that low flat kick exploded in their face. Luzek was the last man to chance at him, and Brown, who can haul it for a tight end, was gone 82 yards. Lindy Infante was, sa was saying that he hoped the special teams could come up with some big plays. Well, there's a man you give a game ball to for that one play. It. Again, the extra point is important. It's good. Franco has now hit 47 in a row in the USFL. 
And the Jacksonville Bulls have jumped right back into the lead, 23-20. Another look at Mr. Brown's center. Timing on kickoffs is so important. It's a short kick. He bobbled it just a bit before grabbing onto it. But his timing and finding that hole worked out just perfectly. It took New Jersey six minutes and two seconds to drive down the field and score a touchdown. And in less than 10 seconds, North Brown counters with an 82-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. The crowd is roaring after the 82-yard touchdown spent by Norris Brown, Jacksonville Bulls' first kickoff return ever for a touchdown. Boy, if that doesn't pump them up, I don't know what it'll take. <laughs> Probably another one, Keith. We'll have to go back to back. The Gies and Knight are deep for New Jersey. And Franco way out of the end zone. With the wind at his back, Brian Franco gives New Jersey no chance to return it. The Generals will come out to the 20. 60,100 here today. Now it's up to New Jersey to once again try and go the long way home. 80 yards down the field to try and counter what Norris Brown did to them in just under 10 seconds or so. Let's check in for a moment with Tim Brant, who has Norris Brown down on the sideline. Swanee, you heard Lindy say at the beginning of the game, special teams was the key. Norris, when did you see it open up? Right away, it was a flat kick. When I got the ball, I saw a crack. When I got through the crack, there was nobody there but the kicker. I said in my head, the kicker can't stop me. I can't go home if the kicker stops me, so I just turned it off. <laughs> All right, Keith. Said to my head, Keith, don't fail me now. Here we go. <laughs> go home anytime he wants to. You betcha. Herschel Walker, game tackled at the 20. The New Jersey Generals, just a footnote to Norris Brown's run, the Generals waived him earlier this season. Redemption. Yep. Number three, tied in at one time. Second and ten. Flutie. He's got Broughton deep. The wait's too long. Goes the short way, however, to Maurice Carthen, who had leaped out of the backfield. And Maurice has the first down at the 37-yard line. He had Broughton early, but couldn't get himself set to throw. I see he fakes a play. I don't know where he's looking. He may have just decided he, he, did, he couldn't get turned around to go downfield. He may not even have seen Steve him. Broughton was down there, but by the time he was able to turn himself enough, and if you're running to your left to throw the ball, you at least have to square your shoulder. You have to stop, turn back around, get set, plant those feet, and then heave hold. Walker. Down on the 40. Three yards. Harry Beeson. And there's another fella. Uh, we'll have to think about him. He's been terrific all day and was equally strong last week. Smart player. Played about four years for the Seattle Seahawks. Doing a very good job of keeping the position. Being in the right spot. Most often throughout the afternoon. Second down and seven. Lodi's got it. Up pass is way intercepted. Intercepted by Sam Chase. The receiver just lost his footing. And the Lodi's pass is on the way. Jakes with a diving interception. Michael's contesting here. But it's going to be Jacksonville's ball around midfield. Challenge, I don't know. Now, whatever it was that Mike was talking about, the ball's wrong. Picked up. He's got the ball. They've challenged it. And while Mike has had challenged it, feeling that he did not have possession of the ball, or possibly he may have fumbled it. Better show it one more time because Scale McCoy is sitting over here to review it and needs to see it. Take another look. 
Keep that. Take a look at Johnson when he gets the ball here. Okay. Johnson, excuse me, he grabs it here. It looks like he has possession there. His hands are under the ball. Even though he's checked, the ground. He's not done Now, for my from, from this like angle, it looks like he has. Picked up the phone. I saw him nod his head. So that would think, I would think mean the call stands. It's, it's very tough to see. For one, one life who may have been able to see the ball in his hand, that's making the challenge. But from that angle, it's not clear that he lost possession of it. Which and rolling right over, he shows the official right away that he has control. And that's what the official will look for right after that kind of catch is made. Did you ever hit? Did the ball ever hit the ground? No, or did I you have it all the way? I had my hands under it. I knew I had that one for sure. I broke on it, and that was mine. That was six. If I could have kept my feet. Hi, ma. How you doing? Never hit the ground. No. Well, Here's the call. That's the Play has been ruled an incomplete pass. New Jersey will retain the ball. Whoa! Ho ho ho! Whoa. <laughs> ah, there's some hot shoes on the press box level. That is a tough call for anybody to make. I'm <laughs> Keith, I have no comment to make. I'm going to leave it alone. At least looking at the same thing we're looking at. What's he seeing that we're not seeing? The rule said that it had to be clearly, um, you know, a bad call. But it could not be anything that was close. Well, Van Dins, of course, is, you know Van's going to tell you he had it all the way. He yeah. had his hands under it. But Keith, I think he had it. Because look at the control he had as he rolled over when he caught that ball. Third down and seven now from the 40 for New Jersey. And now the crowd's really going to get into the state. Okay, it's on you. Well, that's the part of the replay, though. I mean, what the heck? That's what it's designed to do. We're about Booty running around. Going to get outside? No, he gets his pass off for Bombers. Right back in the ball game, and it is incomplete. They told us Sam wouldn't be back, but suddenly there he is. And it is an incomplete pass and brings up fourth down. Batiste, G, all in on the play. Johnson, take another look. Flutie rolling out. Now he's got good pursuit right here. Doug Flutie just can't, he's not going to be able to turn it up. So he tries to loft it to Bowers. Now watch Gee coming up from behind. He knows he's not going to have a chance with the ball. He was just getting ready to lay one on Sam Bowers. All right, Rick Partridge is in. Perry Kemp is deep. Partridge kick is away. End over end of the win. Low one. Kemp's got it. Got a little room. And comes back to about the 33. 35-yard punt and 8 yards return. 8 minutes and 35 seconds to go in the ball game. And Jacksonville leads 23-20. Jacksonville has the football, first down at their own 33, and despite the successful challenge of Walt Michaels, they are unable to come up with any advancement of it, so to a large degree, all they did was get the crowd upset. <laughs> Very upset, and they may have also infused into the Jacksonville team a little more energy. A little more. Give them a little more incentive and uh, go after it. Luther on first down, gives it to Mike Rozier, he's got a convoy. But he can't pop it through there. Good defensive work over there by the generals. Looked like it was Kyle Bola, number 50, that got into the convoy and stripped the wheel. Really, the, all the controversy over it really doesn't matter because nothing came of it. Yeah, but the rule state it has to be clearly a bad call to, in order for it to be reversed. And right here, Keith, I can't tell. He's got his hands under the ball, the ball pressed between his hands and the body. I can't tell that he lost control of it. 
It's second down and five. As Luther gives the ball in the middle, and Rozier pops it out of there. The penalty flag goes down, and look out for that one. He's going to have what appears to be a first down, but it may get wiped out. A holding call, possibly. Looks like it, yes. All those bodies in there. Oh, Jacksonville face says mask. it's on the Whoa, defense. Oh, face mask. Face mask against the defense. Rozier back in the ball game, Keith, giving Jacksonville that ball control offensive ground game that they had in the first half. We'll take a look to see if we can find it right Manuel there. Manuel Weaver got in by the face mask. Inadvertently grabbed him by the face mask. It was not intentional. Five yard penalty. But a first down still for the Jacksonville Bulls. They will try and possess this, Keith, and use up as much of that clock as they can and score. Clock is rolling at 7, 18 and counting. And it's first down Jacksonville at their own 48. Trying to pull off their second major upset in a row. They keep doing this, it'll quit being upsets. Rozier with the ball and to midfield. They beat New Jersey here, come back and beat Tampa, and lose any other game during the year. That would be an upset. <laughs> well, most people didn't think they could beat Birmingham. They did. And certainly most people figured New Jersey would win this game, and they haven't yet. Not yet. They're trailing by three points. That's a good moving the ball. Even though the fans are so enthusiastic, as you can tell by the attendance here today, yesterday many people were asking me what I thought about the ball game. I didn't turn ask them. They said, well, we're really behind our bulls, but we don't think they can beat the, uh, the general. They're proving them wrong so far. Right. On second down and eight, Luther drops it off short. Mike Rozier has another Jacksonville first down. That's Bullen. Brings him down around the 37-38 yard line. Right about in this area of, of the field is where you really miss a guy like John Joyce, man, because he, one, he's a fiery competitor, but secondly, he's a very agile linebacker. You also miss the services of a Tom Woodland and Freddie Certainly Gilbert. Do because they can come in here and play as if they're a starter. Freddie, of course, the best, the quicker in the back of That's right. Give these guys the best, and you always playing with fresh people. Marvin Lewis is in. Rozier out for a breather. First down, Jacksonville, New Jersey 37. It's Lewis for the ball. Big back, 229. He's got good yardage on that carry. Inside for 30. Now it is the New Jersey defense that's beginning to look a little fatigued. Tom Borland got up a little bit slow on that particular play, Keith. Got into the middle of, a, of that semi-convoy coming to the outside. And Lewis had his uh, option there. He could have gone straight to the side. He could have picked it up just a bit. Just on the yard before stepping out of bounds. Got eight. Second down, two. and could have a first down maybe. Final score now, Oakland has defeated Orlando 21 to seven. Lasana, whoo, pretty head today, 14 out of 19 for 193 yards, three touchdowns, and he hasn't played all season. <laughs> Brent says, I'm thinking the state is about getting more playing time. Ron Hibbert might be thinking a little bit more about Wonder his to the end of the third. Wonder Butler might be hurt a little. Could be. All the car just inside the 27. Uh, it's a first down. Things are kind of quiet over on the New Jersey side now. 81 degrees we started, and it's probably 10 degrees hotter down on the surface, but they are on grass. Mike Rozier back on the lineup. And the eye back right now. And he's got the ball. And trying to spin to the outside. He wanted the middle, and the middle was open for just a moment. But as he went to the outside, uh, Borland and Preston were there to get him. Jacksonville, uh, I, you know, I hate to say this. Dave Burns has just handed me a note. And I'll kind of hate to say it, but Jacksonville hasn't had a turnover in 10 quarters. They have to uh, need a big sack. Real big difference in Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey having turned the ball over once this afternoon. Second down and eight. Luther back. It has time. Goes short with it. And it's Young, the tight end. 
Jacksonville Bulls have countered and come into their tight ends and to their back. Grabbing across the middle. Controlling it with Rozier running the ball earlier in the first half. Full house backfield. Now they're breaking. Seth Lewis up. Give it to Rozier. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. Tremendous penetration that time by the New Jersey general defense. I think that's Bobby Leopold that came in under the bottom and slowed him up. Leopold, Maurice Clemens gets up out of there. He lost on the play. A uh, little bit, not much. It is second down, or it is third down in goal to go now. They tried to pass, got it down. Very close. Rozier couldn't get airborne that time for it. So they're looking at third down and the better part of a yard. Well, if you're talking about just blowing people away, that defensive line for New Jersey has got 260, 280, and 280 up front. 270, 260 against it on the offense of Jacksonville. Going to come right this time, I think. Rozier on a sweet right. He's in there. And everyone thought you were jinxed and you wouldn't be a very good professional football player. Herschel Walker having an outstanding game this afternoon. Mike Rozier turning in a phenomenal football game this afternoon. Franco's kick is good. And with two minutes and 17 seconds to play in the ball game, Jacksonville leads by 10. 30 to 20, Rozier has run for 76 yards, scoring two touchdowns, picked up 42 yards receiving, producing 118 yard total for him. And here it is, the offensive line of Jacksonville doesn't match up man for man to have the strength to go straight ahead and stop front. They chose this time on the second play to go to the outside to the right southern line gets the call. They make, a good, they make good contact. You see a block right there. A Mason that closes off the outside. Rozier gets run. He finds the open hole. He's got Lewis out in front of him. Touchdown. It was uh, Larry Mason that made the key block on Gregory Johnson. 
You'll see it here again. That key block he's talking about just closes the pursuit down from the inside. Justin. That's right. Justin that comes to the outside. And he's blocked right there. The block was earlier. It was the block was earlier when they took uh, Johnson out. So Mike Rozier banged up. Come together by faith. Franco with a win to his back. Knocks it deep into the end zone. Pazis will not return it. And with two minutes and 12 seconds to play in the game now, the Jersey will have to start at the 20. Mr. Lucic San Antonio, or is beating the Batman now. 35-9 in the fourth quarter. And a big day for Ron Camignano. Two touchdowns, throwing and two running. You see the scoring drive for the Jacksonville Bulls. Eating up the clock, 67 yards, good ball control, possession drive, Rozier capping it off, a key player in the entire drive, but what it does, Keith, it sets the stage for all three of the Heisman Trophy winners to show a little bit of their medal. Herschel Walker and Rozier have already been the key factors in this ball game. with two minutes left to go and play. Two minutes to go in the ball game. It might be Doug Flutie, the little magician who's in charge, can bring him down. Maybe an onside kick, pull it off. The kickoff was into the end zone. It was 2.17 to play when they kicked the ball into the end zone. The clock operator wound the clock down to two minutes. The clock should not have started. So I don't know whether they'll take a second two-minute warning or not, but they've got to put some time back on the clock, it would seem to me. So uh, they're moving it around here in order to go back to about 2.17, I believe, is what it should be. They're going to let the clock run down in the seconds to get to 17 or whatever it is they decide to put up there. You see them adjusting the minutes back to two. When the ball's in the end zone, the clock doesn't roll because the ball is not in play unless he chooses to bring it out. He did not. Oh, they danced it on down. Uh, here's a fourth quarter score now. Baltimore has thrown to the lead over Arizona. 22-19 as Kelvin Bryant has run one in from 18 yards. And they were successful on a two-point conversion. So, that's a good, a good rumpus up there in uh, College Park. There are your husbands in their performances. Now we're ready to go out of the shotgun. From George 208, including getting some pressure from Keith Miller, and he knocks it down. Back inside the 10 at the 8 yard line. The big cougar from Washington State. Four strikes. A Doug Flutie today. You've been waiting all day to say Washington all State. Day. That's right. <laughs> well, they finally come to Keith Millard's side when he's got his ears back and looking for the pass, and he did with his. Well, he's been doing well all year long. Flutie steps out of his end zone and throws a hummer that is incomplete. A wicked hit by Jakes, and Batiste was right there on Collins. And I guess now we get our second two-minute warning. <laughs> so New Jersey, in effect, uh, gets a second timeout. Ball is back on the eight. Our USFL presentation next Sunday is an either-or. Either Houston at Memphis or Tampa Bay here in Jacksonville. The announcement will be made at a later time. Houston is playing tomorrow night in Portland against the Breakers. It's third down and about 22. As Flutie goes back into his end zone, dumps the pass off, pass in the hands of Herschel Walker. Walker getting some blocking help, and he, oh, he's very close to a first down. I think they'll mark him just short of it. He'll be short by about one yard, Keith. He was headed right for that marker. Goal for it, just bounced a little short. Well, on fourth down, trailing by 10 points with a minute and 46 seconds to play. I've got to believe they're going to go. They'll think about it for a split second, then they'll go. Going to take a timeout. The Generals have two remaining, and Jacksonville with two remaining. So while they are talking, let us ponder the standings here for a moment. New Jersey trailing by 10. Certainly would uh, need some kind of a miracle to win this ball game, which puts uh, Tampa Bay all by themselves in first place in the Eastern Conference at 8-3. 
and uh, drops New Jersey into a tie for second with uh, Birmingham at seven and four, and moves Jacksonville and Memphis into a tie for fourth place at six and five. So I don't think you're going to see any more wins by the Jacksonville Bulls called upsets. I don't think so. Brian Seif along the sideline and just gives him a little more time to come back and completely heal up from his shoulder because what Ed Luther with what Ed well. Luther <laughs> No, I'm just saying is if something should happen to Ed Luther as it did to Brian Seif early in the season, yep. you know, with Ed Luther playing so well, Brian Seif doesn't have to hurry back into a lineup, cause himself to get re-injured. Fourth and one. Walker, got it. And then some. Oh boy, all the way across the 40 to the 41. Well, if they're going to have any chance of miracles here, they're going to have to score probably within the next 41 seconds to give themselves some kind of time to stop Jacksonville. 141, they set the chains, and Ted Humphreys winds the clock, and Flutie back to throw. Goes down the middle to Bowers, Sam, double team fumble the ball, and Jacksonville man puts it up. Nobody blew the whistle. Oh, no, they didn't they blow the whistle. Vaughn Johnson is the man with the ball, so it's, I don't know if they're going to call him down, they're going to call it an incomplete pass. The official is still standing at just about the 49-yard line, conferring. I think he's calling it down, but I did not hear anyone blow a whistle, Keith. Neither. Of course, there's no way we'd hear the guy from the other side of the field. That's true, and all the other officials continued following the play as if it was okay, but Sam Bowers being helped off the field, Keith. He got sandwiched. Lindy Infante, the head coach. It could go as an incomplete pass, I suppose, but it looked to me like Johnson did have the ball. Yeah, it looks like he did fumble it. They're rolling in a fumble. Yep. We'll take another look. There's the pass to Bowers. That's possession. There's the hit right there, but decent. Coming up, Vaughn Johnson, it's a fumble. He picks it up, starts to run. I don't know why the run's no good. <laughs> In any case, it's as Lindy Infante had said. He needed what he needed for the boys team to come back and win the small game team. Better by his special team, a couple of breaks in the ball game, and he's had all of it today. Well, as of now, the playoff teams would be, if we were to end the season today, Tampa Bay, Birmingham, New Jersey, Jacksonville, Memphis, Houston, Denver, and Oakland. Eight will go into quarterfinal play. 126 to play in the ball game. Jacksonville by 10. They give it a Rosier, and uh, Mike sort of disappears in the stack to get the clock rolling. Turnovers are the big story for Jacksonville against Birmingham. They had four, none themselves, and today Jacksonville was done, and New Jersey was two. Coming into the ball game, and a takeaway giveaway in the technical area. New Jersey had plus two. Jacksonville had a minus one. Uh, takeaways and uh, giveaways. But even up there for a little bit, bringing them down to and going up a plus one. Doug Flutie not having the best game this afternoon. Things got rolling for a pretty good start with Mercer carrying the ball and finding Sam Bowers downfield for an early touchdown. Same as if New Jersey Jones would just roll well. He's close to the 40. So oh, big, big day for Mike Rozier. They do get the first down, Keith, and that virtually cinches it for the Jacksonville Bulls. The clock is rolling now. New Jersey with one timeout remaining, and we've gone inside a minute now. Mike Rozier running for 88 yards on 22 carries and produced another 42 in receiving Herschel Walker with 169 yards on 29 carries. A bloody nose. And a bloody nose. At the 41, Ed Luther takes the snap, 
Takes it to a knee. And this one's about to go in the book. The Jacksonville Bulls had a big ball game here last year and an exciting game with New Jersey, one we did for you. 28-26, controversial ending on a missed field goal. But it was decisive today. The first time the Bulls have beaten the Generals as the time is winding down now. And it's Jacksonville 30 and the New Jersey Generals 20. And here's Tim Grant. I'm with Coach and Fox. Hey, Coach, congratulations. I know you talked about what a big ball game it was. You did it with just a special team. Let, let me get with Walt just a minute. All right, he's trying to shake hands with Walt here. The team now, both teams getting together. Two big, big wins in the world. Birmingham, New Jersey, Lindy. Uh, it was a great win, there's no doubt about it. Uh, great win. It was really big for us to keep our momentum going because uh, we got started off so slow this year. And, Finally starting to play like a football team, hoping to keep it going. You told us right at the beginning of the ball game how important special teams would be today. Set off to a rocky start with special teams, gave yourself four field positions the two first times you had. Well, we made the one big play we had to. I said something big had to happen with special teams, or we'd be sitting here fighting for our life in the fourth quarter. And uh, Norris's run back of that kickoff was a big, uh, big shot in the arm for us. Well, you've got to feel now, especially coming off these last two wins, that you are playing as well as anybody in this league. Well, I think so right now. We've beaten two pretty good football teams, and there's a lot of good ones left out there to be played. we got a real tough schedule from here on. we just got to hope we can keep our momentum and our self-pride going and keep playing hard. I know how high you are on Brian's sight, but I can't see uh, any change coming. <laughs> well, it's hard when you got a guy that's winning football games for you. We'll worry about that when the time comes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, Keith. 60,100 at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. See the home team beat the New Jersey Generals by a score of 30 to 20.